Hey guys, it's Luke here and welcome back to another video. Today you join me for something pretty damn exciting. I'm here today at Martin's VW here in Basingstoke to have my first look and first drive of the new Mark 8 Golf. Now, it's not the standard Golf as you might have already gathered from the title and thumbnail. It is in fact the brand new GTI. So I'm really, really excited to bring you guys this video. Now, as I'm sure you guys are already familiar, I'm certainly no stranger to a performance Golf, having experienced pretty much every single generation of Golf GTI, numerous experiences in the T-Roc R, and of course, a year-long ownership of a Mark 7.5 Golf R. Now, if I delve into my pocket, I do have the key to the car, and it is parked somewhere here in the forecourt. So let's go find it and go take it out for a first drive. Okay, here we are then in the hot seat, my first time in the new GTI. Now, some of you guys may remember, I did a first look style video of the new Mark 8 GTI earlier on in the year when it was first released, but fast forward a couple of months and here we are in the driver's seat with the key right here. <laughs> now, before I tell you everything there is to know about the new Mark 8 Golf GTI, I need to get some miles underneath my belt because I am just far too excited for this. on some lovely country roads on a fairly decent day in the new Mark 8 Golf GTI. You have no idea how excited I've been to get behind the wheel of this. And actually this video has been majorly last minute um, to organize. So it's all a bit of a surprise, it's all a bit of a blur for me. However, Mark 8 Golf GTI, what are we saying? So up front, we have the infamous EA888 block, two litre four cylinder, which is pretty much the same as what you'd find in the Mark 7 and Mark 7.5s. 242 brake horsepower, which is 15 horsepower more than the standard Mark 7.5 GTI equivalent. It is, however, the same as the performance pack of the Mark 7.5, which kind of hints to the more hardcore variants of this, like the Club Sport and the TCR, which could potentially be knocking on the door of 300 brake in a GTI, this is not even the Golf R. 370 newton meters of torque, which goes through, in this case, the seven speed DSG. However, a six speed manual is available. If it was me, I would choose the six speed manual. I think the Golf GTIs just suit that gearbox so much better. I mean, it's a front wheel drive. It's a more involving car to drive compared to the Golf R. I think the DSG is absolutely perfect in the Golf R. However, the six speed manual is the one that I would choose in the GTI. Whilst on the topic of gearboxes, the manual is actually a standard option with the Mark A, but the DSG is the upgrade of around 1,000 to 1,500 pounds. Now, 0 to 60 in the Mark 8 takes just over six seconds, 6.2 to be exact. That is in the DSG. However, if you were to choose the manual, it would be more like six and a half. However, in the manual, you'd be having a lot more fun shifting those gears yourself. Now, in terms of drivability, as you'd expect, the car is so, so easy to drive with the DSG, with the paddles behind the steering wheel. The gearbox is seamless as it always has been and as it always will be, I'm sure. It corners really, really flat, of course. This car does, in fact, have a limited slip diff as standard and also some upgraded brakes, which have both been taken from the Mark 7.5. It's a GTI, isn't it? And it has not lost that characteristic at all. It's fun. It's like a little go-kart for the back roads. 
I mean, you find yourself not doing crazy speeds, but just having a massive smile on your face in the process. And I'm glad that even with the eighth generation here in front of us, we haven't lost that GTI touch. Of course, the GTI badging has pretty much stayed the same, the fairly square font in red with the chrome outlining. Of course, we still have the tartan seats. Obviously, they've been modernized since the originals, but we still get that. And in fact, in the manual variant, you do in fact get the golf ball style gear stick as well. It's just nice how, even though technology and time has gone on, you still get those little aspects that it still is a GTI at heart. Now, silly old me, I've been too carried away driving the thing. I realized I haven't actually introduced you to it. So this is my Mark 8 Golf GTI for the day. It's not my car. Um, and yeah, it's finished in Moonstone Grey. We've got the diamond cut 18 inch alloys on it. And yeah, it's awesome. I'm having so much fun driving this thing, honestly. It's a typical GTI, like I mentioned on board just a minute ago. It really has not lost that characteristic of the Golf GTI. And that I'm very, very, very thankful for. Now, even though, like I said, technology and time has gone on, this still is a GTI. And that's what I love now. I mean, looking at the front, we've still got the gloss red pinstripe that goes right the way across the front of the car. We've got the GTI badge, again, still looking fairly retro. I mean, comparing this to the Golf R badge, for example, of course the R was only introduced uh, with the Mark VI. This has been going right for the Mark I. This is the OG Fast Golf. And it still has that kind of retro feeling uh, badge up front, that red line does follow through into the headlights. We've got this big grille up front with the fog lights integrated there. They look really cool when they're on actually. And like I said, the 18 inch diamond cut wheels with those red brake calipers behind. Again, a very typical and traditional GTI touch. I think all in all, the car looks great. It looks a lot more menacing from the front. From the back, I think a lot of people are a little bit confused and maybe not as keen on it because they thought it looked a little bit boxy. I think with the exhaust, again, very traditional GTI with the two big exhausts on the back. I think with that and also the GTI badge on the back, it does tie it together. I'm actually a big fan of how it's now positioned directly underneath the VW badge. That is actually quite an interesting touch and another one which is followed across to the new Mark 8 Golf R. But bear in mind, this is still the almost bog standard Mark 8 GTI. There's gonna be a club sport and there might even be a TCR. Um, and for that, we'll have more aggressive aerodynamics. And I think all in all, the car will come together. These are not the top of the range alloys. Uh, these are 18 inch, but you can get 19 inches and also 17 inches uh, if you like. But yeah, in this Moonstone Grey, it's almost like a Nardo Grey kind of color, like a flat gray. Looks really, really nice, along with all the red details and the black bits here and there. But, uh, but yeah, I'm having an absolute blast driving this thing. Um, but anyway, I think what I'll do, I need to probably show you around this interior, under the bonnet, in the back seats and the boot with everything because, well, I've kind of deprived you of that. I've been having too much fun driving the thing. <laughs> Join me now back behind the wheel of the car. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a run through of what we're looking at inside the car. Now, most importantly, we have the GTI steering wheel. We've got the perforated leather on the hand grips. It's also flat bottomed with a nice red pinstripe and the GTI badge on the bottom. Of course, with this car, we have the flappy paddles for the up and down gears uh, behind the steering wheel. We also have a lot of buttons in the usual place here. That basically includes the cruise control, heated steering wheel buttons, the volume controls, um, and to change basically and to customize the screen in front of you, the rev counter that is. As well as that, we do have a 10 inch touchscreen which comes as standard with the GTI. It's an upgrade for the GTD and GTE models. Uh, that is really, really simple to use, very, very responsive and really fairly straightforward. We've got your navigation, we've got all the uh, radio details, media, telephone, and of course, all of the climate control as well. Now we do have these little, again, touch sensitive buttons just below that, that you can adjust the temperatures and whatnot for the climate control. However, you can load up a full screen 
on the infotainment system and operate it from there. Then below that, we've got a couple more buttons. Actually, the button to uh, load up the climate control screen um, is there as well, along with the mode selector. Now on this car, you have eco, comfort, sport, and individual. Individual being the mode where you can basically customize everything to do with the exhaust sound, the brake feel, the suspension, and everything like that. And then below that, we then have the start stop button and the gear selector along with the handbrake and auto hold. Now down here, it's actually really bizarre because you don't have a traditional um, kind of almost like a more substantial gear lever, which you'd get in the Mark 7s and 7.5s, uh, or like a manual, having a manual gear stick. It's kind of like this little toggle, which you can flick through reverse, neutral, drive and sport, and then park is located just above that. It does look as if it would be quite flimsy, but I assure you it's not. It's actually quite satisfying to kind of go from reverse into drive. And then of course the button handbrake, which everyone is already used to. Other than that, the seats in here are very similar, if not the same than the previous generation. I personally don't think that that's a bad thing because I got on really well uh, with the seats in my previous car, the Mark 7.5 Golf R. We still maintain the tartan seats. Now that is another traditional Golf detail and touch. I love how this has kind of become the GTI thing. That is the go-to um, interior. Finished in cloth with the Alcantara on the bolsters of the seats. They're very supportive and very comfy as well because this is ultimately gonna be almost the daily driver of the hot hatches. I think that that's where the Performance Golf range really excels in terms of being a high mileage motorway cruiser and an absolute riot on the back roads. We have this almost honeycomb effect on the dash pieces here that obviously carries on into the door cards as well. I presume you can um, change that when specking the car about what kind of finish you like. That's a nice touch. It's not like bright silver like you get in some cars. In fact, my, my car actually has some awful like silver bits all here, there and everywhere, which really distract you. But this is very sleek. You've got like a gray and black and then the red touches here, there and everywhere as well to kind of remind you that you're in a GTI if you haven't forgotten. And if you have forgotten, you're an idiot. <laughs> but yeah, all in all, it's a really nice place to be. You've got the air vents really subtly located. Actually a bit lower than normal. In fact, the light panel is almost, almost like where the normal air con vents would be, but they're kind of just below the, uh, the honeycomb piece here. But yeah, all in all, it's a really, really nice place to be. Um, you could spend hours and hours in here munching away the miles. And also you can have a hell of a lot of fun as well, as I have been doing this morning. Um, but yeah, that's about it really. So there we go. That is gonna wrap up my time with the brand new 2020 Mark 8 Golf GTI. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to give the keys back to the guys back at the dealership. In fact, once I've had one last drive in order to get there, but this is actually their brand new demo. So this is basically available to demo and test drive imminently if any of you guys watching are interested. Of course, I will leave all of the contact details down below for Martin's VW in Basingstoke. But yeah, as always, if you guys have any questions or queries with anything that has been mentioned in today's video, then let me know down in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you. But that is gonna wrap things up for me today. Again, a massive thank you goes to the guys over at Martin's VW for lending me their new car for the day. And again, like I said, it's available for test drive. So anyone wants to go and experience it for themselves, then follow the links down below. But yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, please do make sure you leave a like and make sure you subscribe for all the adventures still to come.